When it comes to preventative maintenance, I'll be the first to admit, brake fluid service is probably one of the last things on my mind. But it is, in fact, one of the most crucial on today's vehicles. Join me on this episode of The Trainer and find out why. This edition of The Trainer is brought to you by Auto. To see the full line of professional diagnostic tools and equipment from Autel, visit www.autel.com. By now we all should realize that periodic preventative maintenance is crucial to a vehicle's operation, more so now than ever. Brake fluid hydraulic systems is one that should be sitting there at the top of our list, simply due to the safety aspect of their proper operation. One thing that this technician took for granted so many years ago is how crucial the brake fluid characteristics are to proper operation of today's braking systems. And I'm not just talking about base hydraulic systems that can be found on any vehicle. I'm talking about systems like anti-lock brake systems and traction control, but more so EHB or electro-hydraulic braking and AEB, autonomous emergency braking. You see, these systems rely so heavily on the brake fluid, the lifeblood of that system, that the characteristics that fresh, clean brake fluid possesses disappears over time as fluid begins to age and perhaps becomes contaminated. It's up to us as technicians to properly maintain this hydraulic system by keeping fresh fluid in there, and making sure the system is free from contaminants, including air and water, considering that brake fluid is hygroscopic. As already mentioned, now more than ever before in the past, these brake systems rely ever so much more on the characteristics of the brake fluid. It's the speed in which the system operates that dictates how much effect this brake fluid will have on its operation. As brake fluid becomes contaminated and old and breaks down, the characteristics it once possessed disappears over time. With that being said, we have to consider our liability as technicians and shop owners. Consider, for instance, the AEB systems, the Autonomous Emergency Braking Systems. These systems are engineered considering the certain aspects that the brake fluid and the brake linings provide for us when that friction is created against the brake rotor's stopping surface. If we change any one of those components characteristics, it can drastically alter the performance of those systems. Said another way, older, broken down brake fluid, or one that contains air or contamination, will have a drastic effect on your vehicle's braking performance. And in some cases, could lead to a car accident. Brake fluid, much like engine oil, lives by certain standards set forth by SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers, and or ISO, the International Organization of Standardization. These characteristics simply must be possessed by the brake fluid we put in the vehicle, otherwise it won't perform properly and could lead to catastrophic failure. Now, the kicker is, in many cases, even if we put the wrong fluid in the vehicle, us as drivers, or our customers, are not going to notice a problem, typically. However, in a situation where an emergency braking event has taken place, or an electronic stability control has taken place, or an event carried forth by a, the autonomous portion of our braking system is taking place, it's then where these improper performances are exhibited, and as I mentioned earlier, could lead to a crash and somebody getting injured or perhaps even killed. The one thing we have to keep in mind is the dot threes and the dot fours that you and I as technicians typically reflect upon when determining what fluid to put in the vehicle is not enough. These are basic generalized standards that the fluids must meet. But the manufacturers themselves set more stringent standards to optimize brake performance. If we don't follow these specifications properly, we are in fact putting our customers in danger and their vehicles in harm's way as well. 
One characteristic of viscosity is known as kinematic viscosity. And we can get a feel for kinematic viscosity when we drag a spoon through a glass of honey and then compare that by dragging the spoon through a glass of water. That drag we feel represents kinematic viscosity. More viscous or more thick fluid is slower to respond in brake hydraulic systems than that of thinner fluid, one that is less viscous. So by placing the wrong viscosity fluid in the vehicle will lead to performance issues. It's that reason we have to follow specifications set forth by the manufacturer, not just the Society of Automotive Engineers. To make my point, a conventional braking system, once the brake pedal is applied, can achieve maximum brake pressure in about 600 milliseconds, just over a half a second of elapsed time. And that may seem pretty swift, but consider the technologically advanced systems of today. Systems that are electronically hydraulically actuated can achieve peak pressure in a fraction of that time in as quick as 120 milliseconds. However, it's the characteristics of the fluid, the proper fluid in the system, that allows this rapid brake pressure to build. And having the wrong fluid in place delays that system's ability to build peak pressure when it counts most. And that's not when you're standing on the pedal. It's during the dynamic braking taking place in ABS events and traction control situations as well as autonomous braking. It's the cycling of the system, that building and releasing of pressure, that's going to be more noticeably affected by having the wrong fluid in the system. Viscosity is measured in a unit known as Senestokes, abbreviated as lowercase c, capital S, capital T. And Senestokes is square centimeters per second. For instance, dot four brake fluid, one in which we should all be familiar with, is viscosity measures at approximately 1800 centistokes at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. However, a more stringent classification of brake fluid known as class 6, even though it is still dot 4, takes the centistoke rating from 1800 all the way down to 750. The basic goal of any ABS and traction control system is to maintain vehicle stability, and to also allow for anywhere between 5 and 20% slippage of the tires. That's how the engineers maximize stopping ability. But all that comes into play only when the fluid is of the proper type and possesses the characteristics set forth by the engineers that design the system. That's where the importance of proper brake hydraulic system maintenance comes into play. And it's our job as technicians to make sure that happens. It should go without saying that we should always reference OEM material standards to determine which brake fluid belongs in the vehicle we are working on. Not only the dot rating, but the manufacturer's specific recommended specifications for that vehicle. By now we should realize how critically important it is to get the proper brake fluid in, but also get all of the old spent material out, considering it may hold hygroscopic properties and dirt and contamination that have built up in the system over time, not to mention copper contamination and things of that nature. So doing a proper brake fluid hydraulic system flush, if you will, requires getting all the fluid out of the system. Not only the fluid in the brake master cylinder reservoir, and the brake lines themselves, but also the hydraulic unit, the ABS unit, or the electrohydraulic unit as we call it. In order to do so from that unit means we have to exercise the solenoid valves within it, and to do so requires an adequate scan tool. To carry out this brake fluid exchange quickly and efficiently, we're going to be using the Auto Maxi TPMS TS900 scan tool. After cleaning the master cylinder brake fluid reservoir, of any dirt and debris. Remove the cap and extract the dirty fluid. After extracting the dirty spent fluid from the master cylinder reservoir, 
install the proper fluid that meets the vehicle specifications and do so from a sealed unopened container to prevent any contamination upon hydroscopic fluid. The Autel TS900 comes with this handy wireless dongle to allow for operation of the brake hydraulic system when you as the technician are out at the wheels opening the bleeders to relieve the old fluid. We'll simply service the vehicle and choose the appropriate settings inside the TS900. Brake system bleed. As we carry out the automated bleed, the scan tool will prompt us on what to do next. We're instructed by the tool to maintain pressure on the brake pedal and the software in the TS900 will carry out the bleed procedure. The bleed procedure is going to exercise the ABS unit by running the motor and cycling the solenoid valves strategically to remove any old contaminated fluid from the system, replacing it with fresh, clean, proper fluid. As the function is being carried out by the scan tool, have an assistant operate the brake bleeder valves at all four corners of the vehicle. So as you can see, maintenance of today's vehicle's brake fluid hydraulic systems is extremely critical with today's technologically advanced subsystems that keep our vehicles safely operating on the road today. I hope I was able to break a few things down for you. Pardon the pun. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of The Trainer. To see the full line of Autel's diagnostic equipment and platforms, be sure to visit www.autel.com.